Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 20th. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information as well as develop your own ideas on how these events changed the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. In 1922, the U.S. Postmaster General, Hubert Work, ordered all homes to get mailboxes or relinquish delivery of mail. Without the invention of the lowly mailboxes, civilization would have been very different. Good thing someone had the great idea to invent a sturdy receptacle that would hold the world's most important and earliest form of communication, the letter. Before the 1950s, mailboxes were non-existent. They became necessary after the invention and widespread use of the postage stamps, which allowed people more freedom in sending letters. With stamps, it was no longer necessary to purchase postage from local post offices. Mailboxes became a necessity in 1863 when citizens began enjoying free city delivery. Letter carriers hand-delivered people's mail directly to the doorstep without any charge, although the residential mailbox was already useful then. It wasn't until 1922 when it became mandatory for each household to have a mailbox or at least a letter slot. This ensured that people received their letters and letter carriers performed their jobs. To ensure some form of uniformity when it came to the common mailbox, the U.S. Postal Service required that mailboxes for homes were big enough to make room for letter envelopes and magazines and be sturdy enough to withstand the weather and regular wear and tear. It should also have some sort of signaling device to alert someone that there is a letter inside the box for the recipient or that a package had arrived. The most common type of mailbox used for residences is the tunnel style. It was designed in 1915 by an employee at the post office named Roy Jerolman, who was also an engineer. In some places, such as urban areas, mailboxes and letter slots were designed so they could be installed to the exterior of a home. In 1974, Princess Anne and her husband, Captain Mark Phillips, escaped a kidnapping attempt as they were returning to Buckingham Palace. Around 8 p.m. on March 20th of 1974, Princess Anne and her husband of four months were heading towards Buckingham Palace after attending a charity film screening. Anne's lady-in-waiting sat across from the couple in the back of a maroon Rolls-Royce limousine marked with a royal insignia, and in the passenger seat rode her bodyguard, Inspector James Wallace Beaton, a member of SO14 Scotland Yard's Special Operations Branch charged with the royalty protection. As the chauffeur drove down the mall, a road that runs between London's Trafalgar Square and Buckingham Palace, a white Ford Escort overtook and forced him to stop about 200 yards away from the palace. A bearded man with light red hair exited the car and holding two handguns charged toward the rear of the limo. Inspector Beaton assumed that the man was a disgruntled driver and stepped out to meet him. From six feet away, the assailant shot the officer in his right shoulder. The day after the attack, Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips returned to routine at their home in the grounds of Sandhurst. He instructed cadets in the rifle range, and she tended to her horses. That September, Queen Elizabeth II awarded the George Cross, Britain's highest civilian award for courage, to Inspector Beaton. She presented the George Medal, the second highest civilian honor for bravery, to Police Constable Hills and Ronald Russell, and the Queen's Gallantry Medals, the third highest, to Police Constable Edmonds, John Brian McConnell, and Alexander Callender. Glenmore Martin received the Queen's commendation for brave conduct. In 2014, the Vatican Library began the lengthy and costly process of digitizing their collection of ancient manuscripts. Digitizing the Vatican's 40 million pages of library archives will take 50 experts, 5 scanners, and many, many years before the process comes to a close. The Vatican Library was founded in 1451 and has around 82,000 manuscripts, some of which date back about 1800 years. It will work in tandem with NTT Data, a Japanese IT firm, to convert the first batch of 3,000 manuscripts. It is expected to take four years to digitize the initial round, though some of those documents will be online toward the end of 2014. Before the digitization begins, though, there are preparations to be made. First, NTT Data and Vatican will both have to make sure the scanners don't damage the documents. They've been testing special scanners for the past year, according to the Wall Street Journal. The machines are equipped with a screen that will shield documents from any harsh light. Not much light is likely to hit the text though as curtains will cover all the windows in any room where scanning takes place. When workers start handling documents, they'll wear gloves and have to remove all jewelry so as to avoid scratching the paper. Observers from the Vatican will also see to it that the rules are all followed. After each page is digitized, they will be configured for long-term storage according to the journal. 
Then they will be uploaded onto the Vatican Library's website where viewers will be able to look at them for free from a variety of angles. There's no set time frame for how long this process will last. If it takes four years for every 3,000 manuscripts, the entire library may not be online for over 109 years. The documents are expected to consume 43 quadrillion bytes of storage space and will be backed up in case files are corrupted or accidentally deleted. The initial four-year phase is expected to cost around $25 million, which NTT Data has agreed to pay, though they hope their expenses will be compensated by donations made through the library's website. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 20th. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com A History of the Mailbox at NationalMailboxes.com Princess Anne Kidnapping Attempt at SmithsonianMag.com and Vatican Digitizes Documents at Mashable.com The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana created by Kevin McLeod and Competech.com If you enjoyed the information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.